I begin then with Yayan's preface to his 1987 collection of essays on the social history of Victorian Wales entitled Communities. Yayan wrote, it is an illusion to believe that the processes by which communities were made in rural Wales were entirely different from those operating in industrial areas, as if the former was somehow insulated from the latter. Especially it is the relative simplicities of their social structures and their shared religious culture that needs to be stressed. It was these, Yain wrote, which made the transition from one to the other intelligible for the thousands of migrants who made the journey from country to town, and it was these which came to be expressed most completely and for a time most satisfyingly in a common political culture, and I emphasise that, a common political culture. Yayan's historically grounded phrase would be my personal and textual theme in this lecture. In the late 1970s, when the Aberystwyth uh, graffiti was painted, there was, I think, uh, a millenarian, even for some, an apocalyptic feeling, very much minority feeling, as it turned out. It was a belief that Iwerthal 1916 and Russia 1917 could, would be followed by some revolutionary, certainly devolutionary, awakening in 1979 in Wales because we still believe that we shared, in Yayan's words, a common political culture which had existed in the recent past. But to go beyond Yayan's thesis, to say that a common political culture existed in the 1970s, as it had, say, in the 1870s, is to misrepresent the complexities of Welsh society over that time. As another of Yayan's students, Di Smith, has written, Wales is a plurality of cultures, and we ignore them at our peril. It's the task not just of politicians but of every active citizen to understand these complexities and not to assume that a common political culture just happens, is always with us and is without a very specific definition and can be conjured up by politicians, public servants and other opinion formers of various kinds who observe today's Wales. Better than poets, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever they wish through smoke and mirrors to usher in the wish fulfilment of unity. Indeed, it is the task of every active citizen to understand not only what is meant by a common political culture, but what precisely is meant by community and what is meant by nation. So much of this is still what Michael D. Higgins called a reductive nostalgia, reactionary and revealing a lack of genuine solidarity with what he called the alleged bonds of parish and place. The artificial 19th century construct of Wales defined so often as a nation by sobriety, Sabbatarianism, the Welsh language, and religious nonconformity would have excluded virtually every one of us today. And certainly in Irene Bevan, Saunders Lewis, and Shirley Bassey would not have had a welcome in those hillsides. I remember my late father enthusiastically coining the 1979 devolution slogan, Wales against the Tories. It was, as it turned out, as inadequate and as divisive as Arthur Scargill's The Miners United Will Never Be Defeated in 1984-85. Both slogans presupposed a common political culture <coughs> and one community. Both slogans were aspirational and well-meaning. Both were disconnected from political and social reality. What then did Yayan mean by a common political culture? I think he meant a, a progressive, tolerant, enlightened democratic culture, a virtual community that is simultaneously local, Welsh, British, European, and global. It was both spiritual and secular. For me, it is most emphatically the culture that has grown out of the Enlightenment. It is the culture of Tom Paine, Richard Price, Robert Owen, Henry Richard, Eunice Stallard's Greenham Common, Tyrone O'Sullivan's Tower, and it is the culture, too, of our greatest honorary Welshman, Paul Robson, who in 1957 implored us down that transatlantic telephone line to strive for those universal values of peace, dignity, and abundance. 
That common political culture is then based on a community defined by the shared values of fellowship and social solidarity. But what does this all mean today in the recent past? Is it the so-called <coughs> fairness of last month's comprehensive spending review? <laughs> or is it the enduring and all-encompassing fairness of the National Health Service, the nearest we have to a revered constitution? For me, it is, as ever, about political choices, or as an Irene Bevan would have put it, the religion of socialism is the language of priorities. I remember being with uh, the late Howell Tyvee Edwards the morning after the devolution vote in 1979. We were both angry and depressed. Howell, as you'd expect, more than me. <laughs> and then, two months later, I was in the United States speaking uh, to American miners who asked me about uh, the new Prime Minister, Margaret Thatcher. I said rather foolishly, I don't know much about her. It doesn't really matter anyway. She won't last. 